well, now that we're recording, I'm going to say what I was saying before, for these two passages um, of Judges 17 and 18, I had trouble in reading them because, you know, we're looking through trying to see what God is and where the message, but like I had a trouble in reading these things, trying to come with like a message or a lesson because I didn't see God in these two passages. And that's, yeah. And that's where you get your lesson from because God wasn't there. <laughs> And you can see, they did. Well, yeah, go ahead. Uh, and you can see what happens when God's not there. And the main thing for this week, what we're talking about, and then for what we're going to talk about next week, is everyone did what's right in their own eyes. So, welcome to State of Q, everybody. <laughs> yeah. Welcome. Glad to have you another week. Yeah. Um, hopefully everyone's had a relatively good week. Have gone out, stayed safe. Gone out, stayed safe. I don't know. Well, stayed safe. Everything. Depending on what time you're watching this. Hopefully, the <laughs> pandemic's over. <laughs> Sorry, I thought I heard my son. No, I heard him too. Okay. He should be asleep. <laughs> Anywho, we'll press on. <sighs> Man. All right. Yeah, let's be in. Let's continue. Okay. Yeah, I'll just pray this in real quick and then we'll get into it. Oops, hold on. Let me adjust the camera. I'm sorry, people. No, you're good. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Lord, thank you for bringing us here today again to uh, look at your word and uh, go deep into it, to see, to learn from it, to see what happens back then, to see how to apply it to our lives and to learn from them. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay, so this week we're reading Judges 17 and 18. And this is just right after Samson. So we'll get into it with uh, one thing I want to add is and help you with this, Tracy. Yes. You know how uh, Micah, that guy's name, right? Yeah, yeah Micah. Or how he hit that 1,100 uh, pounds of silver, that 1,100 pieces of silver. Was that, <laughs> you think that was connected to uh, Samson? I mean, you told me it was, but it, it can be connected because it just came right after the story of Samson where it was mentioned. Yeah. So interesting well, interesting thing to me is because uh Delilah was given eleven hundred uh pieces of silver and then this guy's coming here well in Egypt some people but this guy was coming here uh back to his mother like here's the eleven hundred pieces of silver that you curse. Things like that. So, it's interesting to think about. Not like it's Do you think mother. Delilah was his mother? No, 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 no. No, I don't think Delilah was his mother. That's not what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm saying some of the pieces of the silver that was given to her may have been cursed. I don't know somehow he got they got okay. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I don't think Delilah was his mother okay. at all. Yes, and then another interesting thing to me. He said, "Oh, the mother." Because it's always it's always interesting what these people do when the, uh, they do the things right in their own eyes. But I guess we do the same thing, which I'll bring up later. How she said, "Oh, I want to dedicate this silver to God for my son, to God for my son, by making it into an image." Well, they weren't um, Israelites, though. They, they were, no, they were. They were in Ep, those in the mountains of Ephraim. Okay, so they're Ephraimites, Ephraimies, Ephraims, Ephraimites. And you read about Ephraim? How <laughs> how petty they are! Right. 
you already know about F friends. Yeah, there, there wasn't anything. Your pettiness there. knows no bounds. And there wasn't anything in here that uh, would say anything about them not being Israelites. True, but I assume because they're worshiping, worshiping other gods and <laughs> making molding eyes of other gods that they weren't Israelites. But Tracy. But did, they did fall away. <laughs> why did the Israelites keep getting delivered into the enemy's hands? Why did God keep delivering True. them into their hands? Because they kept going away from him into other guys. But as a true statement. But oh, the priest. We're gonna to have to talk a lot about the priest, though. But we'll get. To it was like I'm getting paid. <laughs> we're, we're gonna talk a lot about the priest. But Micah, yeah, as you can see, he wasn't really worshiping and trying to follow God. He was just trying to get a whole bunch of gods and like whatever's gonna bless him to see and to see whatever's Come gonna bless him. True. I know a lot of people who do that though. They may not be like a whole bunch of they may not even believe in God, but they get a whole bunch of different things like, okay, mm-hmm. one of these are gonna work for me. I don't right. care. You're gonna work. Have my right. they just have a whole bunch of different things just lined up. You right. Yeah, go for it. No, that's what I say. And we only want them not to really serve them, but for them to serve us. That's and- Ooh. Do what yeah. is good for us, and that's actually, and that's why uh, he was happy when he got the priest because he's like, yeah, now my house is official. I got the priest. Now God, I know that God's on my side. But as we know, he wasn't clearly what happens later on. But we know he, God's not on his side. But that's how the thinking was happening back then, or what they was doing, and just like how you said about now, like one day they're gonna, yeah, one of these are gonna work. Like God's on my gonna be on my side because one of these has to work. One of them it is God. I'm trying to think of a more like specific example. Um where people do this. I want because you brought up a good point, like it's gonna serve me. I'm not trying to serve it. Mm-hmm. Um man, I'm trying to think. You know what? I'm just gonna stick with what I am currently doing as like my side job is the music thing a lot of people like a lot of things people just go in like they do a service job not to serve others but to have people serve them like one of these things are going to blow up and i'm going to get a lot of money it's going to be amazing so like you see like you hear about different like christian artists who start off like oh yeah i want to go serve people serve god with my music they start to go they start to blow up you know what i mean and then all of a sudden they're mindset switches to oh yeah I, this is serving me or they you know that's a horrible example i'm horrible at finding this example this one's a difficult one. no, no, oh fine. thank you <laughs> like how uh but you had a fine example how they first go and this is going with a good mindset of like i want to serve the people oh i want to serve god and like serve the people and help them out because I suppose that's what you're supposed to do. It's supposed to serve up. But then their mindset changes when they start getting they making start money. Getting money and they start getting that worldly mindset. And that's when they start when they start looking at other things and seeing other people and like I wanna be like that, go like that. But you can say how the how the Israelites, how there are times when they were with God and start working with God, but they fall away. They see the other nations. They have a king, they have Idols that they worship, they see that they be doing good also. So that it's like, huh, their guy's doing them good. Huh, let's see if he'll work for me also. And then they start bringing in other stuff that they shouldn't. Because they start to move Indeed. Forward. And just like indeed, why, uh, indeed. just like why, oh, no, Jan, you talk about. Just like, like why Peter fell into the water because he lost focus on Jesus. Now, it's not like he was. This is not an example of like other like good things like not this good, but things that he was focused on that like oh that looks nice that's good but it was just just an example of you lost sight losing yeah losing focus on God. But interesting thing uh because I was looking up some stuff for this so uh yes when uh Michael was talking about the priest now we're gonna get more to the priest how the Micah asked said to him come like to be a father and a priest to them right. Mm-hmm. And then it takes me back to, no, no, it takes me back to that because 
blah, blah, blah. We're talking about with Samuel? No, not with Samuel. This is with Jesus. Matthew oh. uh, 23, 9. Because how he said, uh, he said, could be a father or priest to us. Jesus said, call nobody father because you only have one father. So we're talking about a spiritual father. Mm -hmm. That said. So that made me think of that, or I saw that somewhere, which is interesting. Because, again, they're looking at the wrong thing, thinking that, well, again, Micah is thinking that, oh, now that a priest is official, but it's only official when you're actually completely serving God. You froze. Oh, did I? Well, I'm the one recording, so it, it probably looks like you froze. Okay. Ooh. <laughs> so, uh, yes, now going to this priest. Which there was nothing good about this priest. First, he was first in what Bethlehem, Judah. You know, priests had uh, certain spots that they were supposed to stay at. <laughs> they had certain <laughs> towns or cities they were supposed to live at, and Bethlehem was not one of them. So why he was there, you have no idea. Why he was roaming around, <laughs> no idea. <laughs> That's a great they question. Roam around. They have specific cities that God said. Separate them, like, hey, you guys are gonna live here. I didn't, I didn't even think about that or even know that, but that's legit. Yeah, Bethlehem wasn't one of them. Him going to the mountains of Ephraim wasn't one of them. He was just roaming around looking for. Pretty much, he was just a priest for hire, and we know priests weren't for hire. You don't hire a priest for yourself. They're there. You go to them and for your sacrifices and whatnot, and other stuff. But they mm -hmm. weren't for hire because they were already they was being provided for already with the sacrifices, their food and whatnot. Everything was taken care of. They didn't need yeah. to be hired for anything because they their life was taken care of for them. So that was the first thing that was wrong. Well, first two things: one, not where he's supposed to. The priest is not where he's supposed to be at. Two, he was for hire. It's interesting. There we go, Tracy. You can talk about that. Not being in the, where you're supposed to be at. Not being in the right, your right place. I know. True. I mean, that's intentionally not being in your right spot. I also, it's not like you're trying to find your spot and you're in the wrong spot. That's like, I have a duty. I'm assigned, like in the army, I have a duty. I'm supposed to be here, but I'm a hit this way. That's going a wall. <laughs> Which is a punishable offense. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if it's still punishable by death. No one gets punished with death. What? But like, there's a few. Anywho, oh days. There's a lot of things that are punishable by death. <laughs> Disobey order, you die. And then there's there's a little more you see. But yeah, dude's going a wall. Priests go a wall. And then he wants to consecrate the priest like that means anything. It's hilarious. The priest is just happy to have some money, a place to live. Right. He's happy to, look, priest's happy to get money, being paid. He's happy that he thinks now God's in, on his side because he has a priest now and everything's going to be well. Wait, he even said it. I know the Lord will be good to me since I have a Levi as priest. So, yeah. That was interesting. I love this one. Oh. Yeah, now I know that, that Jehovah will be, will do me good. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. The phrasing, just like, he would do me good seeing I have a Le Levite priest. Yeah. Like, Again. because of this, he will, that he will do well unto me, not because it's not, this, it's not because of God's goodness. It's, it's like action or like, I've acquired so many things so yeah. good things have to happen because i acquired this you know what i mean mm -hmm. you're right that's true it's like that karma 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 why can i not say that right now karma corn anywho yeah that word that idea i do something good something good has happened yo there's this one song i, I uh, heard with ti in it and basically he summed it up like this he was like so he's like so i believe in karma and like, which is like, 
the whole like the entire universe good and bad things are happening to both good and bad people and this good is reciprocated bad is reciprocated all over all over the universe so if, if that's the case if I had sex with this one girl and it was really good for her and it made her the woman that she is today and all successful, then someone should be coming to have, have sex with me really, really good <laughs> sometime now. <laughs> Any day now, someone should be coming up, give me some good sex. <laughs> So that's that mentality is exactly the mentality Micah has right now. Except the they all had, <laughs> and we, a lot of people have today. It's true. <laughs> but that was like the funniest thing I ever heard when he said that. I was like, that's. <laughs> I, don't, I can't say that's how karma works or doesn't work. I could say that's a horrible mentality, though. Yeah. <laughs> and a lot oh, of people about this walk that we have, this Christian walk we have, is a mindset thing. Oh, we doing mm-hmm. these things to serve God, to serve others for the right reason, or are we doing them to, for, to get ourselves served by God and by others? Amen. Yeah. And so, I talked about how the theme of this is uh, how everyone did was right in their own eyes, but the lesson from this is that we don't need to be trying to do right in our own eyes, but we want to be doing right in God's eyes. So, but hey, we, that was just one chapter. We're not done here yet. Now we move on to <laughs> Dan, the tribe of Dan. So, Dan, now, oh, you got it. Yeah, Dan didn't ever start in a good place. Never started right. Now, <laughs> explain. One, how long has it been, and why have they still not been in their spot? Hmm? What are you talking about? It's because they said Dan wasn't uh, in their oh. given spot to, like, here. I don't know exactly what it was. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. In those days, the tribe of the Danites was seeking an inheritance for itself to dwell in, for until that day, their inheritance among the tribe of Israel has not fallen to them. So, one, why were they not even in their spot yet? They, again, another thing of being out of place. True. They weren't where they're supposed to be. Hmm. Yeah, everyone's out of place, these two chapters. <laughs> oh, they, uh, yeah. It, yeah. It gets, it gets worse. Next week will be worse. But, because <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, next week will be worse. But, yes, these two chapters, yeah. They were out of place. So and Judah okay. looks over at Dan like, Dan, why are you over there? <laughs> we got the wilderness like 500 years ago. What are you still <laughs> fumbling around that in the woods for? <laughs> and, so, and what we will see, when things that are out of place meet together, it just makes things worse. Oh, man. Did I ever tell you I love threats in the Bible? <laughs> we're we're going to get to that. But I love threats in the Bible. I love how the old ways. People. Right. I love how they talk about people. It's hilarious. <laughs> but we're, we're going to get to that. But yeah, so then Dan goes to look for their, a place to settle, and they find this place, Laish. And they're like, oh, this is a good place. Uh, they have no connection to anything. The nice is. The land is nice and good. No guards. Right. No one to protect them. We can we can take this. <laughs> and so that's what we are. And so actually of this whatnot. Yes. Oh, I did skip a part. Oh, forgive me. Before you they forget. got to that place, they first met that priest. The priest. And they asked him how, uh, one, they know he was hired because of what they talked. So they know he was hired. And then making me think how, you know how long it's been since they got out of the wilderness. 
or anybody doesn't keep it up on the the laws that they're supposed to follow, probably not. <laughs> so that pre so even if they did, they would know that priest is out of place. It should not be where it's at. Yeah. So asking this priest, hey, inquire of God if his journey for us will be prosperous. It means nothing. It means nothing for them. Well, it means nothing. I was like, yeah, it'll prosper. Yeah, Don't it'll, worry. Yeah, what? I wonder how long did it take for him to say that? Did he go and like, oh, let, let me ask God real quick? Or did he like, yeah, yeah, you're good. Yeah, I talked to God just like that. You're good. <laughs> that is hilarious. So, yeah, after that, they went and then they, uh, Laish, and then they came back to the people and was like, yeah, this is a good land. Let's take it. Why wouldn't you take it? No one, no mm. one. They have to no question anybody. It's a good land. We can take them over. Let's go. So they went to go take over the land. And that's when, again, they went back to the priest. I was like, you know what? We're going <laughs> <laughs> to. I'm going to just read this part. I love it. Because I love how they say it. Blah, blah. Right. So they went. Chapter, I mean, verse. They. Oh, well. I'm not getting to that part yet. I said so they went and they went back to that uh, Micah's house and started started taking his stuff, his idols, his images, the ephod, whatnot. And then the priest came mm-hmm. and was like, took everything. Yeah, it took everything. They even took the priest. <laughs> they, they took they took the priest. Right. The, <laughs> the priest came and was like, asked about what they're doing. <laughs> and then they said, "Be quiet. Put your hand over your mouth and come with us." It's hilarious to me how, again, how they talked back then. So, well, that wasn't the uh, threat. That's not what I'm talking about, though. We'll get to that point. But, yeah, that was interesting to me. They took all of Micah's stuff. And then, when they took it all his stuff and his priest, so these were the things that he thought would would bless him and make him prosperous. And now he had a priest. Now it's official. So they took all of that, all that blessing he thought he had, Mm-hmm. away from him and then when Micah comes with some people like hey why'd you take all my stuff then I'm like what's your and they ask what's his problem like they had no <laughs> idea <laughs> they're like what we didn't do anything wrong what's wrong with you hey, hold on. I feel like I had a different interpretation of what, what verse are we looking at right now hold <laughs> okay. I know exactly I, know, I remember the part you're talking about but they were, they did they were like yeah man you're the one who's wrong for having all this stuff we're just taking it that's basically what they said that's basically what they said hold up twenty two to uh, twenty five is actually the thing the one part I'm talking about so judges eighteen twenty two to twenty five when after he goes away Micah uh, with some other people overtook the children of Dan. And they called out to them, well, this is 23, they called out to them, blah, blah, blah. And they turned to Micah and says, what ails you that you have gathered such a company? Like, why did you come, why did you come uh, to us with all these people? What did we do wrong? Uh, well, I, I, that part I assume is because they didn't know who he was. <laughs> They're like, I don't know who you are. They just went to the dude's house. They didn't know who he was. <laughs> no, I appreciate I'm pretty sure uh, they knew who he was because of how Micah answered when he said, "What did you take his priest, his God? You, you, say, you take my priest and my gods, and now you ask what ails me? Like really? <laughs> you knew what you did, and you want to play like you're innocent? <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. And that's when the threat comes in. That like when he says, "Blah blah." Do not let your voice be heard among us, lest angry man fall upon you and you lose your life with the lives of your household. So. Ooh, hush. <laughs> like, yeah, shut up. <laughs> Unless you want to die. So I just like how they said things back then. It was very into it. <laughs> They're very into the killing. <laughs> Before the laying of hands, right? <laughs> the laying of hands were strong back then. Oh, yes, of course. <laughs> reminds me back of a. Yeah, this reminds me of a. What's his name? 
not Sam, Sam. Gideon, when he's like, he went to that city, he's like, hey, we're, uh, after like, uh, they disrupted that whole, the, what was it, the Canaanites, was it the Canaanites? Yeah, they disrupted them. The camp? Yeah, the camp. And then they scattered, and then they went to go, they're going after their princes and stuff. They, he went to that city, hey, help us out. My men are hungry and tired. We're following after these princes. Help us out. It's like, no, we're not helping you. What, you have the princes with you now? It was like, okay, I remember that. So when we get these princes, I'll come back. We're killing your city. <laughs> he does that to the next city. He does, goes to the next city and does that. <laughs> the same thing happens. So <laughs> then after the princes, they capture the princes, princes, then he does come back to those cities and destroys them. <laughs> so yeah, the laying of hands was very heavy back then. <laughs> Interesting. Like, all right, you don't want to help me? Okay, then. All right, we'll see. We'll see you later. But like, all right, see y'all later. Have a nice day. Oh my god. So yeah. So then, talking about going back to Dan, how they didn't start off that good. One of those in a out of place. They weren't where they were supposed to be. Two, they're taking all these. these they're robbing this person of their gods. One, not like the guy should be having gods. But they're robbing this person of the gods, like it's going to be a blessing. Again, taking a getting a higher priest for them, and not only did they get mm -hmm. this higher priest, and it talks about the priest and the, his children were over them until all for all the generations until they were sent to captivity. So they already had a uh, messed up bloodline of priests over them. So that's what I was saying. Mm -hmm. Dan didn't even start off well. It's just bad for Dan. But yeah. So the thing about these these stories or the story that put together one about being uh, the theme with them again I'm gonna reiterate it this week and again next week how everyone did what was right in their own eyes they weren't looking to God they weren't truly trying to follow God but they was trying to gather as many gods as they can for themselves and having just to have because they think something will work and then it went so far as then. Because if you think about this story wasn't in there just for no reason. And doing that True. priest. That priest was probably not the only priest that was doing that kind of thing, being for hire. So you can see they even had bad uh what is it? They had bad priests who were supposed to be leading and leading people, sacrificing for their sins. <laughs> you have someone unworthy <laughs> trying to save you from your sins. And that's why we have Jesus. If we want to wrap it into that. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And that's and why we, it doesn't. Right. Why... And we only need <laughs> Jesus. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was going to let you go. Continue. And we only need Jesus. We don't have to now, because of Jesus, we don't have to go to anybody to confess our sins to or to say, to make sacrifices for us. Or to do anything special, we just got to go to Jesus and confess our sins, and then and repent, and that's all. He is the high priest. Yes, and he is our advocate. He's our propitiator. What is that? It's saying it. I, I... No idea what words you're talking about. Propitiator, pro propitiator. Whatever. Protector? He's our advocate. Let's just leave that there. <laughs> he's the one came to God. God, it's okay. He's the one calming God down for us. Now give him another chance. I know they he, messed up. He brings up the cases. Like, give him for... one more chance, Lord. <laughs> like, here's the evidence. They suck. But look at me. I'm amazing. The guy's like, yeah, you are amazing. All right, he can pass. <laughs> I know they messed up, Lord. <laughs> Like like the like the bouncer at the heavenly gate, the uh, heavenly gates, and Jesus is like standing from the bouncer, like yo man, see this this guy, my homie. I know he's not he doesn't dress well for this club. You want that he wants to go into? It's kind of messed up. His heart is kind of impure. But he's been working on it, homie. Like yo, I know. Let him in because of me. Like look at me, I'm perfect. Trust my judgment. Yeah. He cool. And the, the bouncer. It was like, all right, all right, he cool. He, you say he cool, he cool. I trust you, G. 
Zeus. <laughs> so the main thing that we want to get out of today, because there's always something we want to get out of whatever we read, because there's always Indeed. Something, is that not to look at our own selves, not to look for our own gain, and not to do what is right in our own eyes, but to look towards God and to look to serve God and serve others and do right what is in God's eyes. Because again, there's a proverb, the heart is desperately wicked. Who can know it? God knows it. <laughs> but okay, when I say, but that's talking about like man itself knowing it. Yeah, but yeah, God knows it. So that's why we need to look towards God because he knows it. <laughs> And he's the one that can truly help us. True. Also to remember about uh bad things happens when you're out of place. Yes. yes. Like be well, when you know the right place to be, be there, fight to be there. Mm-hmm. Uh maybe it's hard to be in the right place, like spiritually, mentally, physically, like in relationships, you know what I mean? Because you got to fight to be in the right spiritual spot, reading, praying, fight to pray. Um, mentally, to be mentally on top of your game, got to keep studying, got to keep doing work, not letting things go to mush. Physically, you know, working out. And relationship-wise, it, that kind of falls in place with the spiritual and mental part. But, yeah, working on relationships, not letting downfalls, like, trip you up and break you. Yes. Hmm? The last thing I want to say is not at all going, well, going on with, I guess, what all we're saying is that not to lean on your own understanding about anything. Because a wise person knows they don't know everything. Indeed. Okay. Well, okay. All that we have for you today. Thank you for, Thank you for joining. <laughs> Uh, yeah, follow us on Twitter and um, now nah, nah, that's the only uh, state of few social media <laughs> <Yeah>. so far. <laughs> cool. But uh, yeah, thank you. Um, have a blessed week. <laughs>